Hi again and welcome back. Okay, in this video what we're going to do is we are going to machine each of these setups. But we're going to do it in kind of a in kind of a fun way. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to apply some saved manufacturing methods. Now these are just very very simple methods. But in our effort to make it so that you can reuse your company know-how we have created these things called methods. And here's how it works. If you remember earlier, I went into my searches and I searched for socket head cap screws. Well here, I have a saved search for what we call machining methods. So if I double click on this, it's gonna bring up two specific machining methods that are associated to this search. First one is called roughing with a three quarter inch end mill. And here's how it works. It's as simple as drag and drop. I'm gonna go ahead and execute. And here it's going to ask me to select the face to rough with my three quarter inch end mill. So I'm going to choose this face right here and hit go. Now what Top Solid's doing is it's loading the tool. It's going to apply the tool path. It's going to, of course, update the stock model because just, that's just how Top Solid works. If we go and look in our NC Operations Manager, you can see there's the tool path it created. But I see a problem. Maybe you see it as well. It's rapiding right through my fixture. And if you've been paying attention this whole time, I told you when we created the machine parts setup documents that we described this as an object to avoid. So why is it running into it? Well, it's simple. I made a mistake. You know, user error happens, but how can you recover from user error? Well, in top cell, it's simple. I'm going to drag my machining stage before the operation we just created. I'll go to my additional tab here, and I'm just gonna simply go and activate the environment in question. And I wanna do it for the first part, part one, and I want to do it for all of these objects. If there's no check marks like that, that means we're not going to avoid them. If there are check marks, it means we will avoid them. And we're going to avoid them by that clearance factor. Green check mark, I'm going to end inserting. And this little symbol means the toolpath needs to regenerate. So let's regenerate the toolpath. And then let's have a look at the result. And what you'll see here is that the rapids have been updated to avoid the fixture. Look at that. They're now all at different altitudes based on what is collidable in their path. Pretty cool. Now, next what we want to do is we want to use this same roughing tool path to rough down this face. Why not? So if I select it here, pardon me, if I select it here, so it's visible on the screen, I can, actually we'll do it this way. We'll leave it visible this way. I'm going to hold control on my keyboard, grab the visual tool path. You see that little plus sign next to my cursor? Left click and hold. I'm going to drag and drop it onto a different part with a different work offset even. And notice it just adapted itself to that top face and assigned 55. Let's keep going. I'm going to take this and drag and drop it down to that face and let's see what it does. And now it's going to rough the rest of the material there down to that level based on G56. And let's get this final face here. And again, I'm just using standard windows drag and drop to do it. And of course that's for 57. Now I'm going to turn off all those tool paths, and now I want to start finishing. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my finish end milling routine in. I'm going to drag and drop that in, hit go, select the face, go. And now it's going to finish the bottom face. Now the other thing it's doing is it is applying the correct feeds and speeds. And the reason it is is because I told Top Solid the type of material that I'm machining and the tooling I'm using. I've also told Top Solid that this tool, when running in aluminum, has this specific speed and feed. So really, I can just hit cycle start as soon as I'm done programming because everything is ready to go. Now, this is another great example of fixture avoidance. You can see it real easily here. That's awesome if you think about it. Cool. Now, let's use this one as well to finish all the other floors. So I'm going to drag and drop this over to this face. That's finished. Let's zoom up over here, make our selection easy. Drag and drop over to this face. And now that's finished. Nice. And let's finish this face up here as well. And like that, now all items have been finished. Now we still have some more machining to do. We have some side milling to do and some drilling to do. So we're going to get to those options next. To begin with, what I want to do is I want to do the side milling here. So I'm just going to right click on this face and go straight to side milling. Now, when I do that, it's going to assume we want to use our last tool. And we do the same tool that I'm using to finish the floors with. I want to finish the walls with. It's a little bull nose cutter. But notice here we have a preview, but we have no toolpath. Why? Well, we have this thing called an events viewer here. 
And this events viewer, it's similar to like a Windows event viewer. It's telling you that there's a problem, okay? And the problem is quite simple. I should scroll down so you can see the problem. It's unable to do the lead in or out. Well, think about that. That's pretty cool that already the software found a problem and it's telling you here in events. So what do we do? We're going to come into here and we're going to go look at our lead in lead out. So let's go to lead in lead out and I'm going to switch from tangential to perpendicular. And now like that, you can see the software is created all the tool path that is necessary in order to do it. My guess is the tangent lead out was just too crazy for it to do with the little arc that's there and the fixture that's there. So the math was breaking down, switch to perpendicular, life is good. But at the end of the day, TopSolid did its job and it notified you of what the problem was. That's a bit of awesome. Now here it's just taking the default depth of cut, which is based on an equation based on the length of the flute of the cutter. Of course, you can override that all day long. You create a methodology for this. You can do, again, whatever it is you want to do. I'm just going to accept the defaults, green check mark. That tool path is done, and that stock is up to date. And now I'm going to simply continue down the process. And I want to take this to this face. The only difference is in this case, I'm going to go edit this last tool path. Oops, pardon me. This last tool path. And I want to modify it to go past the bottom a sixteenth of an inch, like that. Perfect. And now you can see that's that stock like we did or that we left over here. And now we can come over to here and I want to take and machine this face. So I'm going to go to this face, do a side milling. Perfect. Maybe we'll change the depth of cut here a little bit. We'll make this a little bit more aggressive. How about a quarter of an inch? Eh, even 300. 300 works for me because there's only a little bit of a thing up there. Perfect. And then we'll go here. We'll do the rest of the side milling. And this is where it gets really interesting. Check it out. Notice it realized where the material was left off above it. And it just continued right where the other tool path left off. I mean, how awesome is that? Really, really optimized tool path without having to fight with your software to get there. And oh, by the way, that's all the milling. All milling ops have been done. Now we just have to do, uh, I take that back. We have to machine this slot, but we're going to do the drillings first. So let's do that. So I'm going to hit save once, I'm going to minimize this, and now let's do some drilling. So I'm going to start by pre-selecting these holes, going to drilling, going to hole machining, and I'm going to switch to tipping, and let's go find a tip drill. And you know what, maybe this one will work. That's good for me. We'll green check mark, done. And that's going down an equation based on the size of the tool, which is perfect by me. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here because I'm going to actually drill out these things also. So I'm going to do the whole machining again. I'm going to switch to my tipping operation. I'm going to go pick my tool. And the reason it's not picking the tool is the tool is technically a little bit smaller than the hole, but that's okay. That's done. And now while we're over here, let's go ahead and do our drillings. So I'm going to go here and just go to straight to hole machining. Perfect. If you wanted, you can come in here and you can set the type of cycle you're after. Maybe we want a pecking cycle, so I'll come in here, we'll activate pecking, that's fine. And again, we're done. That's gonna come in and it's gonna peck those right out. Perfect. And then if you wanted to, you could totally drag and drop the drillings as well. I could take this, drag and drop it over to this hole. It's gonna totally apply it with the correct work offset and everything and we can come in here and just add the missing hole. And like that, our drillings are done. So that was just a few short seconds, and that is properly managed through all parts. Finally, I'm going to come up here, and I want to machine this slot. So I'm going to go here to uh, slot machining, and I'm going to go see what kind of tools I have in my carousel. I should have a nice little 3 8 end mill. Perfect. I do. Now we need to pick our, oh, well, we have our geometry. Got to pick our frame. I think I misselected something. There we go. Click OK. And now we have our slot machining done. We left a little bit of stock on the wall and we can go ahead and finish that wall as well. So we'll go here and go to side milling. And perfect. One last thing I'm going to change is right now it sees that there's just a little bit of stock there, but I'm just going to let it run over everything again. It just makes more sense. So I'm going to deselect this command, take account the stock to machine, and now we're getting an entire pass here. 
And you know what? I think I'm going to do this as a helical mode as well. Why not? And we'll do an empty pass at the end too, just a final spring pass. Perfect. And like that, we now have machined all of the operations for this part.